All right. Ladies and gentlemen, as I can see, one we got here. Thanks for coming by. And uh, actually, right after the lunch break, it's one of the toughest sessions in such a one-day event. That's what the American call the graveyard session, right? Because the blood is in an area where it shouldn't be after lunch, right? So my job right now is to excite you that much that it goes back to where it belongs. And to be very honest, I think I have so many interesting things with you. Actually, not only technically, but as this is a business track, things which should make you think which way you go, actually what your goal is your, in your environment, what you want to deliver to your users. And actually, I'm having a couple of interesting things that you can do with the different technologies from Citrix but having a major impact on associated cost and uh, associated uh, technologies. My name is Fabian Kienle. I'm the responsible um, sales manager here for the Baltics. And uh, within the next 45 minutes, I would like to guide you through our technologies, latest things and approaches. And um, the presentation is called Providing Best TCO and TVO at Once. I'm quite sure any, almost anyone in here knows what TCO is. Anything that makes it countable, that quantifies actually what we sell. Does the return on invest really come? How long does it take till I have the money back in? So actually all these things are important um, when you make an investment into any technology. That's one thing. But what I'm also talking about, and this is something which you actually cannot express in numbers and in money in these terms, is TVO, the total value of ownerships. Things that you like, things that you take for granted, things that you use every day, but actually something you cannot express in, in money or savings and things like that. So let's go through that. And um, when you've seen my track in the beginning it, this morning, then most likely we were talking about the how. Vendors love to talk about the how, right? Hey, we have a great technology, we have a super protocol, we have great features. True, but in the end of the day, it's not important, not just important. If you do things, you should always ask yourself why you should do things. And I'm here in this session not just to talk about the how, but to talk about the why. Why should you look after Citrix products? Why should you think about introducing our technologies in your environment? And th this is something actually that is not just driven by us. It's driven by many factors, by many things which are coming from the environment, right? 15 years ago, it was a completely different world. I'm with Citrix now for more than 13 years. And believe me, when I joined Citrix, or even before I did that, we were living in a client-server environment, right? And what was that? There was mostly no internet, right? I belonged to the very first ones at Citrix, having a Nokia cell phone with a 9.6K connection, right? And I was super cool because I was the only one having this really expensive wireless connection, not just wireless net, but actually a GSM connection. That was the exception at that time. The normal way was just the classical PC era, where people were actually being in office building, which actually meant if you wanted to work, you needed to be where the office is. And why was that? Actually, at that time, no wireless LAN, no internet, no nothing. It actually meant devices were wired, right? So that actually meant you had to be in the office. And of course, all these classical applications deployed applications were running on or in the environment on the premises at the office. That was the status quo at that time. Client server computing where everything was in one location, that's it. Only a few had remote access capabilities, but that was really in the early beginning. So why do we need cloud environments? As I already said in the beginning, a cloud is nothing new. The idea of the cloud is something IBM invented 60 years ago when they came up with the mainframes. At that time, a centralized environment, a centralized app. Of course, no graphical user interfaces, right? It were the super duper green screens. I'm quite sure some of you still remember that. So actually, the idea is the same. It was thin clients, terminals, stupid piece of metal that only had one purpose, to look into a mainframe to get actually the front end to the user. What we are doing here in the Windows world, or let me 
express it that way, in the cloud world with graphical user interfaces is exactly the same idea to deliver applications and beyond that, desktops in every type of application. So not just the standard Windows app, but also Java apps, .NET services, SaaS application to make it available anywhere. Because this approach was locked, it was locked down. You could only work with it when you were at one at one location. And this is exactly what's changing. The assumption in the PC era actually was that you had to be where the office is, right? Do you know what would have happened if I would have said, told my boss 15 years ago, hey boss, um, I want to work from home. He would have said, if you want to stay at home, then take a day of vacation, right? The idea that this is a new working model to say, hey, okay, stay at home, work from there, you have access to everything, it was simply not there because the technology was not in place to do something like that on a granular basis with all the resources you want. So the office was the assumption and being mobile was something exotic, as I just said, it was something that was the exception, right? It was expensive, the technology was not there, remote access solutions were just in the early stages, so actually it was the exception. Same thing with the company. Everybody got one image with apps, and nobody cared if I need these applications or not, right? It was just an image and you just help yourself out of it. Nothing personalized. It was always on premise. The office was where I am, right? And so on. So the cloud world, ladies and gentlemen, is actually doing one quick thing, and that's why it is not just another hype. It's a paradigm change. It's a change driven through smart devices, which Apple and Samsung initiated, so iOS and Android driven um, things that drives the consumerization of these devices, and of course the internet that makes it now possible to access anything at high speed from anywhere. So in our world, it's the other way around. The normal approach is right now, the assumption is that I am wherever I want to, with any device I want to. The exception is being in the office. I'm with Citrix here. I'm based in Munich, but if I'm not traveling to the Baltic countries, I'm not even in the office, I'm in my home office. I'm never at the Citrix office, maybe once a month. So this is the exception. I work anywhere, but not in my office. And this is exactly the entire mindset that has changed, driven through technology, that allows people, that allows your employees to actually have access wherever they want. So we believe that the exceptions of the PC era are the new assumption of the cloud era. The world has changed, driven through significant technologies. And even if you think, ah, I'm not sure if I should do that, working from home or doing like that. However, the possibilities are there. It's your to decide what really fits into your world, how your users work, and what not. It's an offer. Cloud technologies, cloud environments are an offer where you can adjust and simply pick the best that you actually want to have. But of course, Many vendors are playing in that field. And this new era is very important because first of all, that's another thing, and I'm the best example for myself here. 15 years ago, I only had one device, right? My notebook. Meanwhile, I have my MacBook at home, I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, right? I have my corporate notebook. Holy mother, right? So that means, meanwhile, the notion of the cloud is that people no longer have just one device. It is possible that they have just more than one device. Another thing that comes through this kind of technology and the approach that this is now possible. It's common to have more devices. More and more, as the world's going more and more global, people are living and working from almost anywhere. More branch offices, more locations where people access. And another thing that was unthinkable 15 years ago, SaaS applications. At Citrix, we are using Salesforce. Salesforce is the best example for a cloud application, for a SaaS application. It's a centralized service, browser-based, which I can access from anywhere. The Citrix go to meeting or go to solution, another example. It's something, it's a service that you use, but you don't have to deploy it or install it at your own premises. So this number is going up, and these are actually the drivers that make sure that we are no longer living in such a world where everything is locked down, where everything is happening at one location. This world is actually extended by any kind of device, any kind of tablet, PC, 
different kind of application except the usual suspects like Windows or Java or .NET services. And of course, HTML5 apps, Android and Apple-based apps. So the world has extended because of the centralized and mobile approach that we are having. And as you already learned from the session before, of course, also data is following all of this. And that actually means we are living no longer in a world where IT is locked down. Again, because of the internet, because of the independency on the client device and the client itself, it is now possible to do anything anywhere. Or as we say at Citrix, the office is where you are and not the other way around. So the real reason for the cloud, as I already stated, and I said that in the beginning, centralization. You can call it as you like, right? 10 years ago, we called it application service providing. That was the same thing but only with a different world. At 10 years ago, we were only focused on apps. This is actually an offer where you decide if you think about centralized apps, desktops, or services, right? At the end of the day, all these things have one thing in common, to have a centralized solution. That is the key idea. And of course, as I already stated, the fact that you can massively reduce cost just by the model itself. So the why for the cloud, ladies and gentlemen, is not because it's en vogue and everybody does it and it's simply cool to have a cloud. No. Citrix, since we are in the market, and this is something we do for more than 22 years right now, we were believing in the cloud already 22 years ago. When it all started with the term of services and also a term of server is a cloud approach. Centralized apps in a centralized farm and only the user interface is delivered over any connection to a client. This is exactly the same means of a cloud as we have it today. Only the character, the dimension has changed. Now we can actually offer anything to any client and not just an application or a desktop. And of course, what I like personally best, and this is where you have an immediate return of investment, is the clients. If you switch from a client-server world into a centralized world, the clients become irrelevant. Why do they become irrelevant? Because there's no longer a need to refresh them for new CPUs, bigger hardware, to test applications there, and to exchange client OSs. It's no longer necessary. It's all in the centralized environment. The client is just a fulfiller. It's just something, could be anything, that holds a Citrix client to display an application or a desktop. That's it. And because of the fact that the client is irrelevant, it means you can use your existing hardware until affinity. It can't get older anymore. You can actually use whatever you like. So that means the frequent investment into the exchange of client hardware is no longer existing in this world. And this basically, only this major step, make sure that you reduce the complexity of the client because there is nothing left that could be complex. No more support, no more nothing. It's just a stupid piece of metal, like in the terminal times with a green screen, which you turn on, the user picks an app or an OS, and that's actually it. So, nobody wants this anymore. Fortunately, hallelujah, right? Everybody is living in this world here right now to be completely device independent. That's what people like, being independent, to choose what I want and not what a vendor dictates me. And this is another huge TCO point on your list because whenever people tell you something to do, then it most likely costs money, right? So if somebody says, yeah, Windows XP is end of life 2014, then this is a statement which forces you to invest and to do something. You can only react. You cannot act. You have to react if you like it or not. With these centralized approaches, Citrix makes sure that this whole thing is turned around. By centralizing resources, you make the decision how your client work looks like. You make the decision what kind of apps you deliver and if you still need an operating system or not. It's completely up to you. By separating the layers, and that's the idea of virtualization, right? The separation of layer. A desktop has hardware, operating system, application, and the user actually. So with server virtualization, we managed to separate these two layers. Hallelujah, that was the idea of virtualization, to be independent. 
with the OS to the hardware. What Citrix does, like other, any other vendor as well, is to have another layer here to make sure that the application no longer runs dependently in the OS. So with application virtualization, we are creating containers around the application, not called VM, but called um, Sandbox, where every application is completely independent from the OS. So that actually means own registry, file object named, um, 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 file object, um, uh, named object, file system, and so on, and own registry. It's all packaged in one sandbox. That means it's completely independent. And by having it independent, it means I don't care if there's another release of a Microsoft operating system. The app no longer needs to be tested as it's completely independent. It's no longer installed, it's just stored there. And by removing these dependencies, you benefit from that. Because even migrations in the future will not force you to, again, replace hardware, test applications, change anything, spend money. That no longer is the case with this. And that actually means, besides this any, any, anything, what Citrix has, has shown in the past, which is pure freedom at all, it also allows you to actually decide what you want to do and what not. You're no longer tied to decisions to vendors. And as I already said, the consumerization, using devices like iPads, like Samsung Galaxy tabs, Playbooks, and all these devices, is thanks to this. And what the marketing people call consumerization of IT is actually that what you are doing, buying fun devices that can be used for business. If you look at that, that's a very interesting analysis from last year. So if you look at that, that's the new iOS and Android device activation in December. So between December 1st and 20th, it were daily 1.5 million devices. And uh, as almost anyone got something like that for Christmas, I guess, it were like 6.8 the same day also with these device activations. So it's actually showcasing that these devices, the trend to these devices is unbroken, right? So that means the way towards the cloud exactly remains like that. But as I already said, the cloud is more than just saving money. It's a paradigm change. It's not just about fancy features and fancy things. It's about how do you want to work tomorrow? How do your people should work with it? Remember, I think it's only a couple of weeks or a month ago, there was this um, anti-occupy movement all over the world, right? When people were trying to protest against the banks, and especially in Frankfurt, where the European Central Bank was, many of these Occupy protesters blocked the entrance of the banks uh, so that these bankers couldn't go to the office. Well, I'm not naming the name of the bank, but there were a couple of banks telling their people, you know what, until these people are gone, stay at home and work from home. You all have access, you can do all your jobs from there, stay at home. So actually disruptions like that, or even if it's a weather phenomenon, if it's floodings, snow, because people can go to the office, you can simply stay at home. Because again, the office is where you are. And this is another great idea of that what Citrix does. You're no longer constrained by, by outside forces or disruptions, whether they are man-made or not. So in this case, the flexibility of that model is that what really thrills. All right, cool. So I'm quite sure you're with me with this. You say, hey, cool, yeah, great. Wow, but now I need to buy a lot of products to actually make that happen, right? Well, maybe with other vendors, but not with Citrix. And why is that? Because we believe when we talk about so many different products, right, Xenapp, Xen Desktop, that means VDI, Terminal Services, Application Virtualization, VPN, WAN Acceleration, Printing, all these technologies, then you might guess, oh wow, Citrix wants a license and wants money for each of that single technology. That makes the whole thing incredibly expensive. Nope, absolutely not. The best way to describe what Citrix does is, of course, that's the number one souvenir when you go to Russia. For me, at least, it was when I got there, I had to bring my wife a matroshka, right? So another piece that could settle dust on, right? That's how I would call it, right? However, it's the best way to describe what's hidden behind the product name Xen Desktop. The name says it's desktop virtualization, but actually it isn't. 
The desktop virtualization part is only one small fragment of the entire solution. Actually, it is VDI. It's that what you do to virtualize your desktops in virtual machines on hosting infrastructures to deliver the user interface. The same product includes the terminal services, and we will talk about that in a moment. The third part is application virtualization to actually sandbox and isolate apps to have them on a separate layer. And of course, what we believe is mandatory for a centralized solution, because if everything is in the data center, then what we call the last mile to the user, that means from the data center to regardless where the user is, and the user could be connected through the LAN, through the VAN, satellite connection, dial-up, could be anything, then this last mile has to be extremely performant to make sure that the user never suffers under a connection. He wants to work with the same speed and with the same capabilities regardless what the connection is. That's why we believe at Citrix, it's not just nice to have technologies that are in the data center. In order to accelerate the last mile to the user, we need one optimization to accelerate any TCP-based traffic. And last but not least, for remote access, for authentication and encryption, the SSL VPN solution access gateway. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that you see here, all these products hidden behind this, Xen Desktop, Xenapp, also Xenapp, Branch Repeater and Access Gateway are available in one single license. So that means regardless which one of these technologies, these cloud technologies you use all together or separately, or even if that changes in a year or two, you only need one license per user, period. That's it. No strings attached. That makes it, first of all, way easier to license. Even if your own plans are changing, Citrix is changing with you. It doesn't force you to invest again into something. And it makes sure that you know what kind of costs are coming. And as we're talking about perpetual licenses, there are no further costs down the road. So that's what we call FlexCast. Besides the fact that we are different than anyone else in the market by having these technologies out of one hand, we are also unique because you can do that with a single license per user. All right, I'm not bothering you in these 45 minutes with all of the scenarios that we have, right? So we have almost anything. Of course, we have so many technologies enabling so many different approaches. What is the goal at the end of the day? The application. The only reason why IT exists are application. Because at the end of the day, your users are working with apps to do their jobs. That's a clear thing. So the question for the cloud then is, what is the best way? What is the best fit? And what is the best technology? And what is the cheapest way to deliver an application to a user? And actually, there are two examples I would like to point out that you see that you can do the same things with completely different technologies. And besides Citrix, the attached cost, that means Microsoft licensing, storage, and others, are also affected by that. Let's start with the first scenario. And that's actually something we call hosted VM-based apps. Or in other words, if it's not marketing, VDI. Now, what is the idea of VDI? Very easy. You have a hosting infrastructure. On that hosting infrastructure, you have a virtual machine per user. Most of the cases is centralized image management. However, for the moment of usage, everyone needs a virtual machine where the OS somehow is provisioned or given. And people are connecting from wherever they are, right? From any possible device. So if you do it with VM-based um, desktops, that means you need a Citrix license, of course. Xen Server is included. Also differentiated to any other vendor, Citrix is supporting all big names for the hosting infrastructure of VDI. So we are not making the rules. You make the rules by simply choosing what is your favorite um, hosting infrastructure there. But however, it simply doesn't matter. Question to you. If you do VDI with Citrix and you need that Citrix license, what other kind of license do you need to do VDI? And I give you a hint. It simply doesn't matter if you do that with us or other vendors. Which license is mandatory to do VDI? Any idea? Of 
course, a Microsoft license that you need. And this license is called VDA license. And as always, there are two options how to obtain that license. One with software assurance. That's one way how to include that. Who of you here is not having software assurance? That's what I thought. And you know what? This is the normal way. That's the normal way. Regardless in which country you look, most of the companies don't have that because it's a huge cost blocker. People think twice and say, wow, that steals a lot from my budget. True. Hmm. All right. So what are we doing if you want to do VDI and not having a software assurance? Microsoft has a nice surprise for you. If you buy this license separately, just depending on where you buy it and so on, it's roughly, not exactly, but roughly 110 US dollars. This is not the bad part. The bad part is it's per device. And if you think that was already the worst part, then you're still not right. Per year. That's an overkill. And many people say, hey, come on, Citrix. I like the idea, right? I really got it. Centralization, perfect. I like that Citrix only requires one license per user to get the whole stuff. But wow, this VDA thing here, holy mother, right? This is really killing my entire TCO. I don't want to comment this any further. What's the intention of Microsoft to do so? I think you can make your own story there. But however, it doesn't matter. We are in a situation that this requires a huge investment. And this is not everything, right? For such a solution, you need storage somehow. Of course, Citrix delivers optimization solution for that. But however, in some way, you need, um, you need storage. So the question actually is, how can we make sure that we have maybe alternatives? And this is the great thing. If you are from VMware, you can already leave and go back home because there is no other option, right? At Citrix, we do have options. Simply because we have our Matroshka there, who delivers us not just only one way to deliver and desktop, we have several opportunities to do so. And what is this? This second option here is simply called hosted shared desktops. And what the heck is this? As you can imagine, it's not VDI. So what we are actually doing here is we are having, like in the good old times, it's proven technology, a terminal service with Citrix Xenapp on top. Like this. And there are two things you can do with a terminal server, basically. You can publish applications. That's something Citrix is doing since we're on the planet. We publish apps. And then, of course, the second option is to publish the desktop, right? But what is the difference between this and an OS here in a virtual machine? What is the difference? Any idea? This here is a client operating system, right? That could be Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8. It's a client OS. What is this? Server. It's a server OS, absolutely. And we all know in a terminal server, and that's why it's called hosted shared, right? You're not just having an isolated OS, right? If I kill my OS here, it's not affecting anyone else. If I kill anything here, then maybe all my other colleagues might have a quite bad day, right? Because you're not just sharing the hardware, you're also sharing the OS, and that means also apps. We all know that. So but how should this scenario be competitive or an alternative to this one here? And this is the cool thing, what we call user workspace management, what we lately added to our Xenapp products. So what Citrix can do, and this differentiates us, again, from the basic terminal services from Microsoft and others, is that we say for the look and feel only in the beginning, we simply enhance that and make sure that we wrap over this server desktop, and it's still a server desktop, we make sure that we give this server session the look and feel of Windows 7. Ah, okay, look and feel, but it's still a published desktop. So what else? 
Well, first of all, it means we are giving all these usability features to the user. So all the things that you were used to have in a virtual desktop on a local FAT client, that means you can change wallpapers, preferences, all these things can be done. <sighs> okay, cool, but um, it still doesn't convince me, right? The look and feel is one thing, to give the user the look and feel that he can actually personalize his desktop as he wishes, but um, the question that always comes up is, hey, what's happening if I want to make a reboot or if I want to install something? Can you install something on a terminal server just like that? Of course not. If you do it, you affect everyone else. By the way, you need to be in the installation mode to actually do something like that. That's why Citrix didn't stop here. This feature even comes with further technology, what we call user workspace management, because besides all these graphical geeky features that gives you the user the look and feel it would be his desktop, we allow individual customization. So the core technology that Xenap 6 has in place, it allows through the workspace management installations, individual installations of the user and even reboots. And we are talking about a terminal server here, ladies and gentlemen. That's a revolution for terminal services. And that's a revolution through Citrix. Why is that a revolution? Technically, okay, one thing, cool. That's the how. We are here to learn about the why. Why should I do that? Why should I use hosted shared desktops over something like that? Any idea? It's cooler? Ah, okay. It just depends on from which perspective you look at that. What we can definitely say here is this opportunity here with this workspace management allows you the same capabilities. Not only the look and feel, but the fact that a user can roll out apps, install apps, do things like with a virtual desktop. Let's come to the TCO. Let's come to the cost. Let's understand why this is a real good option. So first of all is here we need a hosting infrastructure. You need Xen server, good, that's free of charge. But however, what do we need? We need storage, right? And we need the infrastructure to host, if we are talking about 100 users, to host 100 virtual machines. In the Citrix way, and that's important, we are having a farm right now. That means people are sharing hardware and are sharing operating systems. So that means we're not talking about individual virtual machines. And that means on one box, and that's proven technology for many, many decades, we are talking about the fact that I can get up to 180 users on one box. So that means because of the technology is different, and of course it's technically completely different, However, the result is the same. I want to give my user a desktop and I want to give him the apps and I want to give him flexibility and individuality. So that means I save in the back end. All I need is a farm. Citrix Xenap servers are load balanced by nature because we have a resource load balancing. So that means I don't need any hardware load balancers for that. Secondly, it's fail over. If one box fails, the other one takes over. So these kind of security precautions are already built in for years, not only since yesterday. But what else is coming along? And this is the important thing. So you're not just saving on the back end side. If I'm looking over here, what is this? This is the same thing like here, right? This is HDX and this is also HDX. And these are my different clients in maybe different locations. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of license do I need for hosted shared desktops? Exactly. I still call them terminal server licenses officially. Now it's RDS cults, of course, right? Remote desktop service client access licenses, absolutely correct. The price might be almost the same. It really depends on where you're going. Let's say that it's 100 bucks, but this doesn't matter. The thing that really matters is this here is a license, is a cull where you can choose between user or device-based licensing. And as terminal services and as our Xen app can be license concurrent use based. First of all, you don't need a license for any user. If you do what Citrix marketing tells you, hey, use as many devices as you like, they kill you for that, right? VDA license means that a single person can use several licenses and one person can eat up several licenses every year. This one here would be user based 
And the next good thing is perpetual. Unless you're not changing the version of the terminal services, you can rock on forever with this license, right? So actually, this is a very good alternative. Microsoft, this is in my eyes the only way how to officially deliver a desktop with official Microsoft licensing. Yes, I know it's not a real client OS. Yes, I know it's not virtualized in terms of virtual machine. But it's somehow in the cloud, right? It's somehow virtual. It's a session, not a virtual machine. Does that really matter? As I said, the only reason why IT exists are applications. Maybe I can even do that without a desktop. Maybe I don't even need the desktop. Maybe I just need apps. But that's not my decision. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your decision. And now you can see, for all these scenarios I'm showing you here, I don't care, it's one Citrix license. It's up to you what you do with it. But it actually shows you how flexible the offering is that Citrix can provide to you. And you can change that whenever you like, actually. Let's move on. Another thing is important. Let's assume right now you want to give all your users on your iPad and so on, you want to give them Windows 7 and you get this. Who of you has ever tried Windows 7, or even XP, doesn't matter, on a tablet touchscreen? If you want to see those people, those of you who didn't, it's the people who walk like, right? It simply doesn't work properly because you have to zoom in. The OSs have never been made for touch screens and smart devices. And even the double click sometimes, you know, really pisses you off because you have to do it like that. Then you, you miss the spot, then you close something which you didn't want to close. So it's actually a good idea, but the current operating system except Windows 8 have never been designed for that. And even that is something Citrix thought about. We provide free of charge the so-called Citrix mobility pack. And that means, uh, Windows 7 gets an add-on which makes Windows 7 on an iPad or Android device look like that. We optimize the look and feel to make it easier to use on tablet PCs, even when the OS was not designed for that. So that's this. What happening if you want to run this, your Windows Explorer, you want to check files and you want to check any, I don't know, status on a hard disk? in a Citrix world with a mobility pack that looks like this. So we enable devices and enable operating systems that were never designed for touchscreen use to make it like that. So no force for you to go to a Windows 8 immediately. Of course, that's the focus of Windows 8, to have something like that integrated. We do that even for older operating systems. And that means, and this is actually something I want you to think about, the conclusion is, Citrix is not just a huge product line where you don't even know what you need or not. It's sheer independence what we're offering. You make the rules how you do things. In a pure VDI environment like Vue, you have no option. You either follow the Microsoft rule or die. In this case, you have an option and that's not even everything. If we continue here, we have even more like that. The Citrix receiver, as I already mentioned before, this is another part of independence that we are giving to you because the client strategy is no longer decided by Microsoft or others who tell you, yeah, because we are changing our release to Windows 7 that requires that you also somehow need to replace client hardware and things like that. No, you are no longer a follower. You are making the decisions right now because you can simply say no. I just keep my existing environment. I centralize apps and or desktops, maybe, just up to you. And you can actually access that from any possible device that you like. And if you think that you don't want another PC or notebook, but you want anybody to have, I don't know, iPads or um, Microsoft Surface or anything else, or even thin clients, zero clients, it's up to you. You make the rules how your client strategy looks like and not a vendor. So that actually means the unified look and feel, which I already mentioned, make sure that the front end, and you maybe saw that in my live demo this morning, it simply doesn't matter anymore if this button, this icon represents an application or a desktop. You simply send the mix to your user and the user can provision himself all these things independently from which device he is actually accessing. What Citrix does is we are unifying that and making it available to everyone. 
However, maybe you say, well, Citrix, that's cool, but I still want my virtual machine. You know, that's nice, but I want my virtual machine. But you convinced me this one here, this approach, tough thing, especially because of the attached cost. What Citrix is offering here is a product called VDI in a box. And I can tell you upfront, it also requires this VDA license from Microsoft. But we can still make it an extremely interesting financial offer for you. And why is that? Because the product works completely differently like VMware View and even our Citrix Xen desktop. VDI in a box is a solution which is based on or focus based uh, basically on usability, affordability, and to simply make sure that it can be rolled out. And to be honest, I installed it in my own demo environment at home. And the frightening thing is after 30, 40 minutes, you're already done. And I'm not kidding here. This is really cool. Why is that? And how does that work? First of all, it's just desktops. It has nothing to do with apps. It's just virtual machines, the provisioning of virtual machines with a Windows operating system. It's the only VDI solution that doesn't require any storage. Nothing. Zero. Right? You don't need to have anything in place for that. So how does that actually work? It comes with the same capabilities like hosted shared desktop, Xenapp, or VDI. So the HDX protocol with all the features remains the same. This is a typical VDI environment. You have the load balancers for the connection broker, you have your storage environment, you have your hosting infrastructure. What VDI in a box does say, okay, you don't need all these components anymore in a distributed fashion. And this is the reason why the product is called a VDI in a box, because the product is actually a virtual appliance. All these components that you used to install on different physical boxes are now installed in one single virtual machine. That means in the hosting infrastructure, you don't even need a Windows Server OS. All you need is hardware, hypervisor, you import the virtual machine, configure the templates, done. And this is exactly how it looks like. So it's a hypervisor-based virtual appliance. Needless to say, we support any hypervisor here. You can run it on any hypervisor. And VDI in a box means that all the load balancing, all these technologies, user management, everything is in one virtual appliance. And actually, the OS itself is stored on the on the hard disks of the hosting infrastructure itself. So it doesn't require any additional thing here. How does that look like? You simply install the hypervisor, you import the appliance, the VDI in a box appliance, you import the single image of Windows 7 or Windows XP, whatever you want, Windows 8. You simply configure the templates, which user should use which capability. You assign the user accounts, and what's actually cool, this product doesn't even require an Active Directory. You can even do that with Microsoft Work Groups, right? So this is really made for very easy and simple environments. And after assigning the user accounts, you're done. That's it. It's completely wizard-driven. You don't even need to install any OS from a vendor. If you say, mm, okay, one box, nice, but I want redundancy, you can install as many boxes as you like. The licensing here is only on the user connection license. But even if you put new hardware in place, you don't need to install it. You just import the appliance again. And uh, the configuration is taken from the master machine and is actually replicated to the additional servers. So there is something, this is a solution which you have up and running in a short period of time. And just to give you an idea, Citrix has a has its first OEM agreement with Dell in regards to VDI in a box. And that means based on this, let's say, example product, the Dell PowerEdge R710A, of course you can use others too, with let's say some average configuration, it is enough to hold up to 50 virtual desktops, right? Even if you go up with two or three boxes, we are up to 100 users on three boxes. So that means the overall cost is so low that even this license is not really such a huge impact. The ability, the uh, simplicity, the affordability is, is way bigger here. And one minute is, is left, which actually brings me to the summary here. 
What we want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to actually summarize everything you have. We are no longer living in a world where we only use Windows apps. We use any kind of app, right? And most likely SaaS apps coming from anywhere. And of course, the same change on the client side. Many devices, many OSs, and so on. What Citrix is actually doing, and this is how we understand the cloud approach, is that regardless what your future platforms or apps are, and regardless what your client devices are, Citrix simply makes sure that we connect both with each other. We are not trying to tell you like other vendors, like VMware, yeah, you should put everything on our platform, it should be on our cloud OS and things like that. No, you make the decision if you still use Windows apps, Java apps, whatsoever. It's your decision, not ours. What we do is giving you the promise that regardless what you do today or in future, we deliver it to any kind of client and we do that with maximum security and performance. That's actually what we do here. And this is the technology Citrix is providing. And that's what you've seen in the live demo this morning, to put everything into a unified storefront where all application types and services are actually shown. That's what we do in a very simple way. And this is why we call the centralized masterpiece actually Citrix Cloud Gateway that puts everything together. And of course means then that it's way easier to provision new hires, new people that have to be onboarded. You can actually do anything anywhere. The entire process of onboarding new people or decommission people that are leaving the company can be done way easier, right? You can actually deliver applications to users, and if the user is not accessing from inside the environment, maybe he's doing that from somewhere else with less rights, with less user rights, and less capabilities. So actually what we do is making sure that everything can be delivered anywhere, and that even when accounts are disabled, the access to all of these resources can immediately be taken away. Also, this is a big plus and a TVO of a cloud environment to control things way better. And as you now know why you need things like that, I would really appreciate getting your questions. We are running out of time here. That's why I'm asking you if you would like to approach me in regards of our technologies. I'm at the Citrix booth. I'll be happy to stay in contact with you. Thanks for being here and uh, sharing these 45 minutes with me and hope to meet you soon, very, or pretty, pretty soon again. Thank you very much.